goat yoga has grown in popularity and Heather Lake is showing off how one local nonprofit is taking advantage. Goat yoga, Heather, hi. <laughs> Raul, oh my goodness. So I, I did need to go to the hair salon, um, but I don't know if this is what I was asking for. <laughs> Elizabeth Sugarman, you've talked me into doing this silly thing, which is actually really spon uh, spontaneous, um, very fun. But the goats, um, you know, they just do whatever they want. And speaking of which, there we go. <laughs> you get a little, a little back massage, a little ride. I always ask myself when I heard about goat yoga, why goats, not chickens or pigs or any other animals? Like, what do they do that makes it such a fun and interesting experience? Oh, great question, Heather. I think they're, I think it's just, they're so silly. They live in the moment, they're fully present, and they remind us to do that too. We kind of take that, take a cue from them. We're hurried and scheduled all the time, but these goats, they just remind us to live in the moment, be spontaneous, and uh, they're just no agendas. Yeah, how long have you been doing this? Because it's really picked up steam. I, I've heard so many things about goat yoga at certain farms, but here at your farm, you had this really cool area right here on um, what used to be a tennis court. Yeah. And so people have just really been drawn to it and wanting to do it. We were surprised to have such a strong reaction to it. It kind of grew organically from a 4-H project gone wild. <laughs> My daughter was raising goats and we invited friends over to try goat yoga when it, we, yeah. we heard it was a thing three years ago. And we we are oh, still going strong, a surprise to us for sure, but uh, really grateful for all that fun. Yeah, I feel like there's, um, we got the cleanup crew, by the way, which yeah. is, you know, part of it. Uh, it's, you're on a farm, part of your tours are kind of getting to enjoy everything, yeah. <laughs> including um, the goats and the animals and the llamas that come along with it. By the way, we have some special guests that I want to talk to, so I'm going to uh, kind of interrupt their yoga class, if you will. So if you haven't heard of the Challenge Athletes Foundation, Nico, I'm going to get you in your, your downward dog over here, or we're calling it Kid Pose yeah. today. Um, you guys are with CAF. If people haven't heard about the Challenge Athletes Foundation, you can sit so you don't have to talk like that, uh, which is fun. Um, tell me a little bit about it, just for people who have never heard of it before. So the Challenge Athletes Foundation was founded in 1994 to help people with permanent physical arms. disabilities lead active lives through sports. We provide athletic equipment, funding for competition and training for any sport people want to do. That's riding bikes to the kids, winning gold at the Paralympics, and everything in between. Yeah, would you call this cross training? <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, yoga is a sport. That's one of the things yeah. that we support. We actually have one of our challenge athletes here today, yeah. Danielle McLaughlin. I know, and Danielle's going to chat a little bit while she's holding the cutest baby goat ever. Um, obviously, you're an amputee, and you've been sharing your story with so many people. It's so inspiring. Can you can you give us all a little bit of your story? Sure, happy to share. Um, I was diagnosed with synovial sarcoma when I was 16. It's a rare soft tissue sarcoma. Treated at Rady Children's Hospital. Ultimately lost my left leg after years of being an athlete and a soccer player. Um, and felt really, really lost until I found CAF and um, received a grant for a running leg. and my whole world restarted again yeah. thanks to CAF. And I know we have a couple of challenged athletes out here today. Uh, you guys are so competitive. I've worked with your organization for so many years in San Diego. What is doing goat yoga like as part of kind of just getting out and doing a different sport? This is unlike anything I've ever done before. I am having a blast. I did not realize how soothing the goats would be. I like their outlook on life. It's a good reminder to just have fun and enjoy yourself. Um, are the llamas cracking you up? Because I can't like not look at the llamas and laugh. And so it just makes me think of when you do yoga, um, you're always, I mean, I, they, they always say, don't look at your partner. Don't like be competitive, but you are like, there's no way. This is the only yoga class I've ever been to where I'm like literally not thinking about anything that's going on except for these adorable animals. Yes, exactly. I really want to get to know the llama too, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, enjoy that baby goat. So adorable. Thanks for being here um, today and uh, just enjoying a little bit of goat yoga. How do people do this, Elizabeth, if they want to get involved? Is it only on the weekends or what? Every weekend we do private events as well, and we sign up on our website, sugarsweetfarm.com. A lot of people are surprised how they smile for a full hour, and they'll tell me afterwards, I haven't laughed like this or smiled like this in so long. It was the happiest thing I did all year. Kind of an easy get on in 2020, for sure. Oh my sure. gosh, yeah. I <laughs> but, mean, just something to do that's different and silly and, and not take ourselves so seriously yeah. all the time. Yes, I mean, we're all um, with our kids. A lot of people are just getting their kids back to school, and it's in, it's out, it's virtual, it's not. What's happening? This is a way to just be like, what? 
It doesn't matter. Let's just be silly. Let's yeah. just have fun. You um, surrender to the chaos. Do they normally, do the ghosts just jump on your back? Is that like a normal part of the class or is it just part of like balancing? Like, let's see if we can balance a goat on our back. Yeah, a little of both. The baby goats just spontaneously want to climb on you like a climbing structure. And as they get older, they move more into a kissing ears and nibbling toes mode. Look at these guys. <laughs> So what is this? What's happening here? This is just a mama, two mama goats talking oh. about how pretty their babies are. Oh, Don't say that okay. about my baby. I, know. I see a couple of them do like some funny, I mean, headbutting things and whatever, but it's like, it's just kind of like, you have to observe. <laughs> What's happening so, around you? There's so much going on. A lot going on. Oh my goodness. Um, okay, so what are, are we in a, are we in a pose right now? <laughs> okay, I'll send it back to you guys in the studio. This is probably called, can we do llama pose? Is there a llama pose? <laughs> Instructor's looking at me like I've never heard of that one. Oh, we're going downward goat. Downward goat. <laughs> I can't hear you guys. Okay. My IFB must have uh, caught out. But okay. either, oh, there we go. I hear you now. Downward I goat. You now. I can uh, hear you. Yes. Uh, I downward love the goat. Downward goat. Yes. Well, you enjoy that. That's <laughs> goat yoga. Thank you, Heather.